Food is national security, food is economy, it is employment, energy, history, food is everything. Good evening and welcome, this is Face the Nation. The topic of discussion today is, is Sri Lanka facing an impending food crisis? You can also join in in the conversation. The number to uh, WhatsApp your messages are is not seven six six five six five three five three. The number once again not seven six six five six five three five three. We would be delighted to take those questions to the panelists who are attending Face the Nation tonight. On to my immediate left is Niresh Elithambi, who is the consultant English news director at News First. Welcome on board, uh, Niresh. As always, nice to have you. Thank you, Shami. On on to my immediate left. Uh, so joining us this evening on Face the Nation uh, in terms of our panelists are Professor Radio Silva, Department of Applied Nutrition, Wyambu University, Tilak Karivasam, Executive Director, Food First Information and Action Network, Sri Lanka, Dr. Jayanta Sranayaka, Director, Rice Research and Development, Department of Agriculture, as well as Emeritus Professor Atula Pereira, representing the University of Peradeniam. Let's get the ball rolling with Professor Ray Silva, Department of Applied Nutrition, Wyambo University. Is Sri Lanka facing a food crisis at present? Your time starts now. Yes, uh, I think uh, we are uh, facing this uh, issue in the last uh, uh, couple of years. We have been uh, facing this uh, the, the issue uh, since uh, we had this uh, the COVID uh, uh, the pandemic, and uh, with that. Uh, in uh, the globally, uh, the, the the crisis started, and uh, the Sri Lanka also get affected, and especially the the health statistics. Very recent health statistics uh, indicates that uh, uh, the people have uh, uh, the nutritional issues. Also, my expertise is in nutrition, and we see, and then we got some uh, the statistics. Uh, about uh, the, 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 the nutritional problems, uh, but not very severe as some media sometimes uh, reported uh, to tell you frankly, uh, uh, the, the situation is not so uh, serious, but the people uh, are not eating the same kind of food that they had uh, uh, before. And it started with uh, the COVID and then we had uh, the economic crisis, global economic crisis and then Sri Lanka also we, are, we had this issue, uh, having this issue. Uh, so uh, it happens because of the food. Food is uh, internationally uh, recognized as a right uh, and if people are not getting healthy, uh, the food, safe food all the time as they wish, uh, so then uh, they might uh, get uh, nutritional problems, especially vulnerable groups like children, uh, if they are not getting enough uh, uh, the energy, uh, proteins, uh, so then they cannot grow well, so then uh, uh, that affects the, their, uh, the personal growth as well as uh, in future the country. So there is a crisis, it's a, not just a local crisis, it's international crisis, but uh, it, uh, everything depends on how we manage the situation. So the future generations uh, will get affected if uh, the, the, the responsible politicians as well as the, the uh, officers don't uh, 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 consider this seriously and uh, uh, plan uh, considering our, especially the, the children. Um. Professor uh, Silva, you say that the situation is not as alarming as uh, projected by many organizations. But if you look at uh, the World Food Program report, which was issued uh, in February this year, it clearly states that 70% of Sri Lankan children were stunted even before the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic crisis erupted. That means the height was lower than the age and around 15% were wasted and 17% of children under 5 are stunted, which means they were too thin for their height. With this crisis, the nutrition situation is expected to further worsen in the coming few months. That's right. Uh, the, uh, the e that's why I, I said that even before we had this crisis, the Sri Lanka uh, was having this uh, the, the, the child malnutrition issue. But compared to the other, uh, the neighboring countries like Pakistan, uh, uh, Bangladesh and India, we were doing better than them. However, compared to our per capita uh, income or the, the GDP, 
we, we, we were not so good. Uh, that's why I said that uh, it was no, not very serious means not, we cannot compare our situation with uh, certain uh, the uh, sub-Saharan African countries like that. But within Asia, we have the problem. I'm not, I didn't say that we don't have a problem or we didn't have a problem. We have had the problem, we are having the problem, uh, but it has got a uh, little uh, uh, the, the aggravated uh, during this uh, the last uh, two years but the latest statistics uh, came though I think uh, the government rejected uh, some of those uh, UN uh, things I mean the health ministry rejected and we know that uh, they are uh, uh, looking I'm not totally denying that uh, and saying that there's no problem but uh, the, the UN statistics were so you uh, say you, you say in a nutshell that the situation has aggravated during the last two yes, years. Yes, yes, it's obvious. Who is responsible? Huh, the responsibility should be taken by the uh, the overall the the political as well as the the, the it's it's a government and the state that should take the responsibility as well as the uh, the, the people people uh, cannot take uh, certain decisions uh, uh, they they are the consumers right. but uh, the food should be available at an affordable cost otherwise the people can't eat thank you very much professor brain Silva, department of applied nutrition wyambe university and now move my attention towards tilak kari wasam executive director <coughs> food first information and action network sri lanka what are your thoughts on the subject tonight? Yeah, uh, as uh, Professor Rehnuka said, uh, even though we had uh, uh, projected uh, we will uh, get a, a kind of a bad situation in, in the past, but uh, the, the alarming situation what uh, we have uh, been uh, experienced, it's not that much, uh, as he said because there are there were uh, the some foods which are not categorized as we uh, in the, the the rest of uh, the countries were either imports or either uh, the get as a food uh, in the nutritious way and uh, the my organization uh, during this crisis we have published uh, uh, the report and we were telling about uh, <coughs> the the why it is important uh, the food right the right to food issue with the FAO guideline right to food guideline how it can be uh, come up with the uh, the crisis situation like this and 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 some of uh, those recommendations how we can use to ensure everyone's food because the in the the uh, the lower part of the people who can't afford uh, the food and the the our responsibility of uh, as a uh, the a key uh, the uh, the government and the key uh, <coughs> officials and the as whole the decision makers and they should look into uh, the f food right and <laughs> and everyone's food right the we have a uh, the the three different principle when we talk about the food security the affordability availability and accessibility those are very important to the 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 common man's uh, food and therefore um, uh, the the state have a responsibility to ensure those food adequately and nutritious way and if it is not getting as enough and there is a crisis and that is where uh, the we were experiencing during the pandemic and also after uh, the along with that this uh, the Russian and Ukraine war has create the very big uh, the crisis within the world, the especially the uh, the pr food production side, and also the there are uh, those two countries are the major uh, the 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 uh, produ producers of the the fertilizer, and and with that uh, the most of the effects come to the countries like us because 
we can't afford the price and and especially in the uh, due to these uh, the production uh, the, the collapse and there are the high cost of the food and the, which we can't afford even the uh, uh, when we try to buy uh, uh, the from the our neighboring countries fuel price is the uh, the uh, the factor where the the decision is uh, bringing and then you know, just to interrupt you for a second here uh, so you say that your organization's uh, main ethos or your motto is to ensure that food for all uh, food is a basic human right of every human being yeah and then you go on to say that affordability uh, accessibility as well as uh, availability. availability is important and the government has to step in to address yeah. these issues that, I let's that is look where at, let's look at the food prices or vegetable prices right now in sri lanka it's over 100 percent more than what was experienced a couple of weeks ago yeah. how can the people afford mustn't the government issue a, 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 a subsidy scheme for those who are living below the poverty line at least to afford food or basic nutritional factors for their daily meals that, that is of course uh, there is a responsibility of the government uh, and and especially with the uh, the as you said uh, the when it come to the consumers the of course the when the production goes down in the country with the different factors like uh, the the drought what we are experiencing and also the 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 fuel prices and all other things are subject to the uh, this price hike and and uh, the especially the if you are look at it uh, uh, the last few months uh, the vegetable production and and the areas we have uh, the experiencing with the drought and all that and we know uh, the some of the farmers are not actually uh, taking the uh, the advantage or the risk because of the uh, the, the last few uh, seasons they having the bad experience if you look at the vegetable price today the along with that if you analyze the uh, the seed price of the uh, the vegetables it is triple the price was triple because most of the vegetable seeds we are importing from the different countries right and it is uh, the farmers are not in a position to take this uh, high risk mm. uh, to go into a uh, invest as as they have <coughs> they don't have money to invest they are taking as a loan and go for a uh, uh, the this production and and the security what they are getting it's very low right. and therefore they are not going to uh, grow vegetable as it is right thank you very much Atila Kale was some executive director of food first information and action network sri lanka uh, i now move my attention towards dr jayanta saranayaka director of rice research and development department of agriculture yeah uh, regarding the food crisis uh, in fact at the moment we have enough quantities of food i mean uh, that's the same thing uh, mentioned by these two gentlemen also i mean but certain things you know that we import from other countries say for example dal like thing but at the moment according to the, our newest calculation the ice quantity which we have inside the country is uh, sufficient for another 12 to 13 months but this situation may vary you know that uh, why food crisis may take uh, how the food crisis may take place you know that uh, most of our cultivations are depending on uh, rain, uh, rain uh, more, almost all, but very less uh, irrigated area uh, under different crops. Say for an example, uh, during Maha season, our, sorry, during Yala season, our rain, uh, irrigated cultivation is 62 percent for paddy. But during the Yala, Maha season, it is 46 percent out of the total land area. So this uh, food crisis may take place in different ways. I mean that uh, sometimes uh, that may be due to the uh, economic situation not only in Sri Lanka but uh, available in other countries also. Say for an example you mentioned that uh, uh, India has stopped the uh, exporting uh, 
uh, of rights to other countries and Pakistan I think Pakistan is also following at the same time if the uh, Ukraine Russia war continues uh, what would happen they may stop their cross-border movement may may be stopped as a result Bangladesh like country uh, mainly depend on uh, uh, wheat imported from Ukraine they may be converted to rice in that case uh, rice availability may not be sufficient for the other countries and uh, you know that uh, earlier couple of months I got this data and uh, rice availability per person was 43 kilogram per hectare in Sri Lanka uh, we consume 107 kilograms per uh, sorry per, sorry per head uh, in Sri Lanka we consume around uh, 107 kilogram uh, per person that was our rate uh, so at the moment we are producing enough uh, I mean, a staple food because I am from the Rice Research Institute also. I am mainly talking about uh, rice or paddy. And uh, we had a uh, COVID uh, situation because of that farmers were unable to access to their uh, fields. There was a uh, production uh, decline. And uh, then again, uh, due to economic situation also, you know, most of the farmers were deprived of uh, inputs. There was a breakdown in the input supply chain. It may be fertilizer, it may be fuel for their machineries, and it may be labor. Like that, uh, there was a reduction. But yet uh, now, uh, according to the recent data, we are recovering. Say for an example, in 2020-22, our rice productivity went up, uh, went down uh, to 2.8 metric tons per hectare. But now we are recovering. Now I, I we hope that uh, this season it may be around four. Uh, four metric tons per hectare. But I want to tell you, as these two gentlemen mentioned, uh, there may be no enough access to food from diff different layers, some different layers in the society for food items, and the the material which they consume may not be nu nutritionally sufficient or nutritional they are not providing the uh, uh, the uh, health requirement or right. uh, uh, do, uh, dr sanayaka now uh, you say that uh, there is sufficient uh, ample rice at the moment in sri lanka am i right yes however if you go to a supermarket or if you go to a outlet in the country right now there is a dearth of uh, kiri samba Yes. at these outlets what's the reason yes. behind it yes. so when you go to an outlet you start yes. thinking isn't rice available for an ordinary citizens to consume yeah so there is a big question mark and that raises an eyebrow as far as the people are concerned why yeah you know in sri lanka uh, we grow uh, we have around 89 rice varieties but out of these 89 rice varieties 10 rice varieties are grown at large scale uh, say for example, A3, the variety A3362 is the number one variety. It uh, uh, takes around 18% uh, of the total land area. But Kirisamba is BG360. They, people have more preference uh, uh, for this variety to other varieties. That is because uh, perhaps uh, they may be taste, perhaps th that may be the nature of the grain. You know that cultivation depends on the demand, demand from the miller's also. So sometimes it is happening in Sri Lanka. Uh, though we introduce many new varieties, many new technologies, sometimes farmers go for B Kirasambo BG60, sometimes they go for other varieties. What we experience, what we notice during the uh, last, uh, last couple of seasons, people are not cultivating Kirasambo much. That may be the reason. The other reason, because I can't comment on that exactly, uh, perhaps uh, there may be some quantities with millers or other farmers they are also having uh, maybe let's, 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 maybe let's take, look at the numbers quickly dr sanayaka annually the rice consumption in sri lanka stands between 2.5 million and 2.6 million if you divide that by 12 you get approximately on 215,000 yeah. uh, metric tons of rice consumed monthly in sri lanka how much of rice stocks do we have right now in the country uh, no, according to the yield figures I am telling, but I cannot comment on the quantities uh, which are possessed by millers and uh, the other organizations because we don't have the, that data. But I am calculating because according to the uh, uh, acreage, I mean the number of hectares. Which but I am sure the Paddy Development Board must be having They are having some numbers. quantities. <coughs> yeah. They are, may, must be having some quantities. Big millers may, must be having some quantities. Even some 
small farmers like in Ampara, uh, Trincomalee and sorry, particular like areas, they are having some quantity. But I am telling the, the, the taking the production figures is may sufficient for another more than 12 months, provided that there is no uh, drought in the forthcoming season, then there will be another scenario. Okay. We cannot predict on that right. at the moment. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jan Saranayaka, Director of the Rice Research and Development Department of Agriculture. So what you're trying to say is, Dr. Saranayaka, right now there is no issue with regard to rice production in the country. However, if the situation worsens, may it be, um, may it be a drought or may it be severe weather, uh, extreme weather conditions, then the situation may change. Yeah. Are we expecting something of that sort to happen in October, November, December with the inter-monsoon season and then come January, are we going to face a drought? Is that in the cards? Because the Metro <coughs> Meteorology yeah. Department uh, yeah. has yeah. clearly indicated that. Yeah, you are correct. Uh, according to the newest data from the Meteorology Department, there will be severe or heavy rains uh, during the months of October, November and December. So these numbers will change? Uh, no, the, what they are, they are now with uh, lots of uh, faith, they are telling it and after that January onwards may have, there may be a drought. drought so what would happen so if we cultivate in time in case of rice we can manage this situation but if there are no rains after January I mean January 1st onwards then there will be a problem for next year season then yeah, next for the next year season we have to think of that and we have to get prepared to face the situation and this for rice right. and vegetables so, and other things they are yeah. different. So it seems like an alarming situation right now Niresh, because of the fact that um, India uh, has already reported uh, one of the worst uh, situations in terms of their food production and they have banned most of the exports to other countries as well so when that comes into play uh, we are in a severe crisis uh, right now, but we'll discuss about all that momentarily. I want to quickly move my attention towards Emeritus Professor Atula Pereira, uh, University of Peradeniya. Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, actually, I'm not representing the University of Peradeniya. I'm from the University of Peradeniya right. as uh, Emeritus right. Professor. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I see... Thank you very much for making that clarification, <laughs> uh, Professor yes. Atula. Uh, I saw, we all saw a situation in this country uh, about a uh, couple of years ago when a very serious decision was made within 24 hours to uh, stop the uh, use of chemical fertilizer that for us uh, defied science it defied common sense it defied logic it created a huge massive problem and we were wondering why such a step was taken and now we are feeling the results of it. It was predicted, many scientists predicted 30%, 40% reduction in agriculture production due to that decision. We couldn't understand the basic fundamentals of science. We, didn't, we couldn't understand that what we were using were varieties, not only us, all over the world, varieties that were produced during the Green Revolution. These were varieties that responded to chemicals. That's how they were designed. They responded to chemicals. They responded to chemical fertilizer. They responded to uh, pesticides, herbicides. That's what, those are the varieties that were using all over the world. And then, then, and we were doing well, we were okay. And then you said, no, tomorrow we are not giving you this fertilizer. Use something else. So what happens? How can such varieties uh, uh, give that production? They must collapse. We collapsed, we got into a pit. We had to get out of this pit. We could understand the difference between compost, biofertilizer, liquid fertilizer, nano fertilizer. They were all coming into this country from everywhere. So there was no, no proper national plan. There are policies. If you, if, you, if you ask every political party, they have a policy. Okay, there are policies. But how do you implement that policy? You must have a plan to implement those policies. There has to be a strategy. Every strategy must have an action plan. Nothing. Without anything, without knowing where you're going, when you take a drastic decision like that, we are suffering now because of that. That 
I see as one of the main reasons uh, for this debacle, for this uh, serious situation that we are facing today. So it's not a policy. Policies are there, but we need action plans how to implement these policies. That is what we need. And I think now this is a situation that we must get out of this pit and create a new future. This is my logo. A new future for our children and their children. Uh, pro Professor yes. uh, uh, Atula, I just want to ask you now, the fertilizer ban came into effect on the um, uh, on in April 2021. Yes. And then uh, subsequently, uh, several months later, yes. the ban was um, lifted, uh, and you could have you could bring in yes. fertilizer as well. Yeah. So, are you trying to tell us uh, that the effects that were seen in April 2021 is yeah. even felt today yeah. in the? agriculture industry in the country yes uh, once you once it affects the cultivation to get out of it you can't have just one season to get out of it it will take several seasons to get back to that situation where you were you you can't just uh, just uh, okay next season i'm going to get and uh, next season it will be okay fine it will it will take a few but that particular thing that like a bomb blast it it, it, it has effect. added to that came the fuel problem added to that came the covid problem this whole complex situation arose and where were our plans we are talking about drought couldn't we predict that couldn't we predict El Nino? Nino? surely today the the technology is so advanced you can predict not days, weeks, months ahead. Why couldn't we predict this? And then if we could have predict. Now, uh, doctor said here that uh, maybe January, if there is no drought. Can we not predict it early? And if we can predict it early, surely we can plan for it. We can plan what we are going to do if such a thing happens. Uh, we, we, yeah. just, to, just to get some clarity on this now. Um, based on the understanding, I still yeah. remember when we used to be uh, students in school, we used to be taken to the med department um, yes. for, a, for a field visit. Yes. And uh, most often than not, these uh, meteorologists, what they tell us is, because Sri Lanka is an island nation, yes. you cannot predict the climatic conditions in the country. Uh, in countries, example, like in the US or Australia, if they tell you it's 6 o'clock, it's going to snow, it's going to snow at 6 o'clock. Yes. Uh, if they say the hurricane is going to strike um, it at 6 or 10, it's going to happen at 6 or 10. Yes. Uh, but in Sri Lanka, uh, it's different. Uh, is that something that can be uh, do, do you, do you think bought as a logical argument? Uh, we could have said that 10 years ago. We could have said that 15 years ago. Today, the, 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 the world is so advanced. The technology is so advanced. We, we can predict, surely. We can ask the material, but can't you predict? Uh, the, okay, this is an island, this is a tropical island. We, we can predict, we, we predict the, the storms that come. We are saying that tomorrow there will be a, a storm is coming there. We can see those twirls in coming around. Why is it that? What is preventing yeah, us but from within predict? a day, uh, Professor yes. Asula, can you can you plan out an agricultural industry as a whole? Within a span of a couple of days, it has to be done months in advance, yes. isn't it? Yeah, we, we can. Meteorological uh, departments in other they predict months ahead. Mm, right. Yes. Right. Thank you very much, um, Emeritus Professor Atula Pereira <coughs> uh, from the University of Peradeniya. Uh, let's open the floor for questions. Uh, Nirish, all yours. Thank you, Shamir. And uh, I'm sure our viewers will be delighted to hear that uh, our good friend Shamir has been appointed as a group director. Uh, to the main board of the Capital Maharaja Group. Thank so you very much. Heartiest uh, for congratulations very much uh, for on behalf of our viewers and of course News First. Thank you very much Sanirish for that <laughs> announcement. <laughs> uh, we expect a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, my first question is to Professor Atula. Yes. Um, and uh, you, you said some very strong words. Um, you, you said that the uh, there was a lack of science, a lack of common sense, and a lack of logic yes. um, uh, in the decisions that were yep. taken, especially with regard to the fertilizer yes. ban. But 
professor now we are uh, discussing the the possi the high possibility of um, another such crisis uh, due to uh, the country's bankruptcy and uh, of course the um, uh, the the weather conditions and the global conditions uh, but we have the same politicians still uh, in those positions yes uh, that is of course a constitutional matter yes. but uh, you can't uh, you can't eat your constitution you have to give your people food to eat yes uh, and uh, should it not be the situation now that uh, our civil servants should step up and yes. tell the politicians what's what with regard to what we need to do with our agriculture definitely sir i totally agree with you how are we going to do that how are we going to tell them no don't during that crisis, uh, I, 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 I had a request from a, from a very high perso personality to tell, me, tell him about this, what, what's going to happen. I gave him, I told him, this is the way to do. If you are doing organic uh, farming, do it this way. And do it this way. It's fantastic, this is very good. But it didn't go beyond him. I don't know why. It didn't go. I told the, uh, the, uh, the, the secretary at that time, uh, you are importing a, 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 a shipload of uh, 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 bio-fertilizer, what is it made up of? What are, the bio, what are the microbes used? Don't know. We don't. That's why I say it defies logic. We must know uh, what we are doing, the, the fundamental. So, they didn't, people didn't know the difference between compost and biofertilizer. So how can you move forward? They didn't know the difference between biofertilizer and liquid fertilizer. We saw liquid fertilizer being brought. We asked, what is this? Nobody knew. They didn't know what it was made up of, what the nutrients were. Nobody knew and the dogs were <laughs> going at it and there was a huge commotion. Uh, it, to, to so follow how up. do we how do we take this message? That's why I asked you at the beginning. Don't we have people from the, the decision makers listening to this, this discussion that we are having? Uh, can't we get them to uh, at least listen to this? Now we are speaking wonderful things. And if these things are not taken up by the decision makers, we are back in the same place. Our responsibility um, at the end of the day, Professor, is to make a public discourse about yes. it and exert pressure to the stakeholders concerned yeah. to take action uh, with regard to the matters that are being discussed yes. and are in the public domain. And yes. that's what we as a media organization yeah, strive to achieve. That's excellent. Uh, I think uh, if you can, yes, we, we need to do that because, to, like you said, to get out of this, we need to get this, as you said, the same same lot uh, to make these changes yes uh, uh, to follow up professor yes. uh, you also said something shocking that there's no proper national plan yes but but uh, last week i, I uh, read somewhere that uh, there's a national plan for tourism which is almost complete yes. uh, which is 95 percent complete they said uh, and and that's wonderful for that industry, every industry should have that. But we are an agricultural country, uh, 2,500 years of agriculture, and uh, we don't have a national plan, uh, plan for it. So e even uh, even um, uh, the tourism, uh, are you saying it's a, it's a national plan or a policy? I, I believe it's a strategic plan up to 2025. Okay, strategic plan, that's fine, yes. that's fine. But uh, there are policies, but uh, there wasn't a plan, so we saw, no? During that period, there was no plan. Suddenly we saw, um, we could have a lovely plan for organic agriculture. We can. We, uh, my personal view, with what all my experience as a UN consultant, if you're a consultant uh, that deals with food, environment, human health, we can easily have a plan, parallel, organic farming, a chemical fertilizer farming go parallel that's the plan we want how to implement that strategies each strategy must have an action plan that can be done with time targets and also very important sir, accountability
why did this not happen here why did this not go from here to here who is accountable so uh, uh, yes. uh, professor atul makes a quite important point uh, stating about accountability uh, dr sranayaka uh, let's look at the last few weeks with regard to um, the water that was uh, held in catchment areas to generate electricity and not being uh, used for farming then how do you view this uh, from uh, in the perspective from the minister of agriculture because uh -huh. we saw statements that are being issued by the minister of agriculture himself saying that uh, he pressurized the government uh, during the cabinet meetings to release water to farmlands but this did not happen but what is your take on this uh, so according to the honorable minister's statement also they were uh, trying to release some water from uh, especially in the udawala area uh, because uh, land is around more than 6000 hectares if i remember well uh, it has to be cultivated because they are under the stage uh, where it, the crop can be damaged they were trying to release some water and uh, but uh, you know in some places we also have seen uh, this uh, plant cultivation is not there mm. sometimes the farmers cultivate the land extent beyond the limit of water supply i mean that uh, the water cannot be supplied to total land area and sometimes uh, you know the farmers also do not pay proper attention to water management and this is one of the things if i try to elaborate on that and in fact uh, we have to have a proper water management system i mean uh, it is the responsibility responsibility of farmers responsibility of general public responsibility of uh, all the policy makers also right so just looking at um, uh, looking at uh, this issue that has cropped up in the recent past uh, dr sranayaka how much of farmlands were destroyed as a result of not uh, uh, releasing water uh, to farmlands uh well have you estimated uh, the number yeah. you know that uh, not all the paddy, paddy lands because mm. we were talking about paddy lands were mainly in certain areas we were talking about uh, vegetable cultivation yeah. also so let's talk about but paddy uh, yeah out of those paddy lands some are cultivated rain fed mm. those paddy lands uh, in uh, i don't have the exact figures at the moment with me uh, some paddy lands in kurnagal districts and uh, um, uh, um, ambantota and uh, monragal districts also which were rain fed farming they were Uh, destroyed by drought and some paddy, uh, paddy lands uh, to according to uh, maybe it's around uh, 25000 30000 hectares but that figure is not very correct so we have damaged 5000 hectares yeah, uh, doctor sir that Nayaka. figure is not exactly correct yeah right? so let, let, let's yeah. just uh, just assume it's yeah. 25000 hectares at the moment yeah. for clarity sake yeah. 25000 hectares of paddy land how much of rice does it produce uh, it depends on uh, Can I can I tell you the total figure? Uh, generally, we cultivate 850,000 hectares, 850,000 hectares per year for maha season, and uh, for around 450,000 hectares for yala season. That means all together we cultivated around uh, uh, 13,000 hectares. Yeah. Right. Uh, those uh, paddy fields which uh, dried due to the unavailability of water, they are be uh, sometimes uh, it may be 100 percent yield losses. But 100%? 100% yield losses from those affected fields. So how uh, much? How much are we saying? Um, but well, that's what I'm uh, coming uh, to tell you. But according to the, these figures, it will not affect our national figure. At according to the present situation, national figure uh, at a large scale. I mean that uh, there may be damage. But say for an example, yellowing yellowing was there. There were some uh, damages, and our Uh, the total paddy production was affected in the country but according to the, the uh, say for an example suppose we are getting 4.5 metric tons per hectare then that will be the uh, quantity which we are going to deprive of okay but but it it gets back to the earlier question that i asked you um, uh, dr sranayaka you are saying that 12 months we have ample rice yes but then just in august we had a severe problem yeah. with regard to not issuing water to paddy farmlands yeah. in the country and the severe drought that yeah. affected their rain so how could you safely say that sri lanka has ample stocks sufficient stocks for the next 12 yeah. months what you calculated based on the production figures which you are going to receive and which we received uh, during last season 
and uh, according to that but i thought the other season is yeah. from uh, march to august yeah march to august generally in march to august and mass season from uh, uh, september to february yeah, like, right right so what we have produced so far that may be sufficient even if there is a 10% yield reduction 10% are arbi arbitrary value right uh, if there is a 10 production yield reduction that may be sufficient for another more than 12 months but we are i am i am telling that we can manage with this situation because most of the you know farmlands were harvested say for an example high production area like ampara uh, batiklo and the most parts of kurunagala and uh, some parts of uh, anuradhapura like they were harvested but that area but some paddy lands are there like polon narva they are at younger stage that crop may be affected if the if water is not provided to those people yeah, but don't you think that yeah. this situation would have been arrested yeah. if water was released to the paddy farmlands in the country mm, uh, uh, it, uh, it but in other areas except this uh, what is that uh, yeah, would have ever reservoirs. Other um, from other reservoirs, water was uh, directed to paddy fields. So the water was released, and that problem persisted. Uh, I mean, uh, remained only with uh, that uh, that reservoir. Um, yeah, someone level that reservoir, not with the other reservoir. Now that area was affected, and uh, rain-fed areas were affected. Mm, it is a, in fact, it's a different uh, story than they were in concurrence. I mean, this electricity uh, department, may Minister of. Uh, uh, what you call this power and energy oh. and the irrigation of the agriculture means they should be in concurrence for such uh, matters. So, uh, just a clarification, uh, Dr. Zenayaka. Uh, when you say that we have sufficient stocks of rice yeah. uh, for the next 12 months, you are relying on the proper harvest of uh, the, the, the next. Uh, next year or so is it no uh, no it, it last uh, last uh, maha season plus this coming uh, this year season because most of the pedlands have already been uh, harvested right so that is actual stocks yeah, yeah. of rice yeah. okay uh, however th this of course is not a uh, challenge which uh, goes away after one year and we uh, just uh, we were discussing about the fact that with this el nino la nina phenomenon uh, which occurs uh, globally uh, in the weather every six years, uh, it's very likely, uh, according to the Met departments of the world, that, um, and especially ours, that next January to April will also be a drought, in which case uh, we would be eating into our stocks of rice, uh, but our production would be less, so the, the, uh, the problem would uh, simply uh, keep going, is, isn't that? Uh, yeah, no, it can continue. That means if the mass season is okay with the uh, available rains, so we will we'll, we will have sufficient quantity because suppose we uh, cultivate around 8.5 million, uh, sorry, 0.85 million metric uh, million hectares, and if we multiply it by 4.5, this is the average yield of the country earlier also, and uh, that will be sufficient for another eight eight months like that. But uh, as the Department of Agriculture and the Ministry of Agriculture, we have also have a preparedness for this situation. What is to what is to be done during the next season, provided that rain, sorry, drought doesn't continue throughout the year. Right. Then there will be a, uh, mm. a different scenario. Uh, so, uh, so just getting back to um, uh, Professor Vairingu Silva. Uh, Professor, I want to drag your attention to the World Bank report which was issued in 2022 because uh, the government uh, seemed to uh, uh, have conflicting opinions with the uh, World Food Program uh, report. So let's look at the World Bank report, which uh, the, the, the multilateral agency which supports Sri Lanka in terms of uh, financial aid as well. A quarter of the population is estimated to live below the poverty line, which is approximately around 5.5 million people which compromises the ability to access sufficient nutritious food. Malnutrition is a long-standing concern, particularly high among women and children. Nearly one-third of children under five are malnutrition in Sri Lanka. Yes. yes. So this is a, this no, is a major is, concern. That's, that's, that is not the, the figure denied by the government because of very recently uh, the release uh, statistics from the health the department also uh, overall agree with that uh, one third of our children are suffering from some kind of uh, uh, the nutritional problems uh, the, uh, the, uh, the different uh, the age categories but it 
did not uh, what I said was well, it did not occur because of this uh, the uh, the economic crisis and the uh, the COVID uh, issue. We had this and we are having this problem, uh, but uh, well, we need to find the solutions. That is true, but. Uh, the so government denied how, some statistics yeah, but, but are given the by the is, UN. The problem is, Professor Renuka, how can we find a solution based on what Dr. Serenayaka said, Dr. Serenayaka itself yeah. said right now, a couple of seconds ago, the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Power and Energy are not working together. That's right. As a result of that, we are facing a crisis. Yeah. And you are saying, um, it's always good for us to work together and find a solution. How exactly. can we work, find a solution right. when we have a crisis of this sort even in government ranks okay nutrition is not one person's or one ministry's responsibility it's not health ministry's responsibility and it is not uh, agriculture ministry's responsibility and it's not education ministry's responsibility it's a multi-sectoral thing so uh, some governments I don't want to mention who, uh, which government but uh, several other governments tried uh, to give solutions, uh, uh, so it's a multi-sectoral uh, combined uh, effort. And there was a, uh, uh, the uh, nutrition secretariat under the president, and it was the it, it was the uh, the arm uh, which uh, directed the, the, the different uh, departments and the the ministries, and uh, they wanted to put them in uh, one track. And we have a nutrition policy in the country. Not like agriculture policy, which is uh, not uh, written and it's still in the draft, but uh, we, at least we have nutrition policy and this is widely accepted by not uh, the local uh, the, uh, scientists and the experts, but uh, internationally. Now that has to be, the, it's a policy, but uh, it's not the action. Policies must be converted to actions. Yep. Actions must be coordinated by some powerful body, and especially the nutrition things. Since it is not governed or controlled by one department or one uh, ministry, there must be a superpower uh, thing. Was uh, in the uh, the, uh, the uh, presidential secretary, but in the last couple of years and currently, it's not active. So we have multi-sectoral nutrition action plan it's written documented printed everything is there but no one is now taking responsibility that's a pathetic situation so if the action is taken by powerfully it has to be taken because it's very difficult to uh, tell something to the uh, ministry of agriculture as well as to the ministry of uh, uh, health they are not working together as an academic i have to tell but there must be some uh, 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 very uh, the top level uh, somebody to tell that so the you have to work together. The, the top level somebody is the president of the country. Yeah, that's why the, the presidential secretary uh, legally has this uh, the power as well as the nutrition secretary. But unfortunately, it's not working. Everyone knows that uh, it's not a uh, secret. No, I, I'm still trying to figure out, um, <laughs> Professor Hendrika, yeah. on the point that you mentioned before saying that this is not an alarming situation as projected. But looking at these figures over and over again, um, because of the fact that I, I like a little bit of numbers when it comes to matters of this sort, uh, 5.3 million people are either reducing meals or skipping meals. That's right. And at least 65,600 people are severely food insecure. In That's right. So that is food security is uh, food insecurity is a problem because of the food insecurity uh, the people will get nutritional problems so i didn't say that uh, we are doing well and uh, so the problem is there uh, but uh, the, the solutions must be uh, taken and agriculture ministry what they uh, produce is very important because they are not producing but they are uh, directing the production if rice production reduce then definitely our people but will all of them are to be blamed no professor Renuka? yes yes the responsibilities uh, have to be taken by everyone not only the politicians but the uh, the yes. uh, officials certain things are beyond our control as uh, others uh, mentioned that uh, the war situations ukraine one but locally there are solutions that uh, we all should sit together and take immediate action and at 
it has to be taken otherwise uh, the children will suffer mainly pregnant women will suffer uh, uh, mainly so Pro uh, professor Redwell, let's talk about that i mean we talk about nutrition and malnutrition uh, and children uh, getting stunted and so on but what then happens what is the impact and uh, a few days ago uh, shamir uh, i think uh, we had a report that 85 percent of uh, the children uh, in in third grade uh, are deficient in mathematics and linguistic skills now aren't these things interrelated if you don't feed your uh, children properly nutritiously uh, isn't this exactly what will happen that their learning prowess will certainly be affected of course. Of course. exactly now let's uh, forget about the the problems in the education sector for a moment just to think about the health and the growth of the child and the brain and all these functional issues if a child i mean since the uh, uh, the child it was is born and especially during the preschool ch uh, time and also the, the school uh, time if children are get not getting proper meals starting from breakfast and the school meals which affected because of uh, this uh, the economic crisis so if children are not fed well their educational ability will be uh, or uh, uh, is uh, severely affected it's a well known thing so the teachers cannot take the blame of not uh, this uh, the, the the failure rates so it's uh, the uh, the it's a health issue nutrition issue so, so uh, <coughs> tilak now interesting thoughts uh, that are being expressed by Pro professor renuka uh, professor atul as well as dr janta uh, i want to pick your brain on why can't the government step in uh, because we've seen uh, such actions and decisions being taken by respective governments in the past we saw during ran singh premadas's time uh, biscuits and milk was uh, given distributed, uh, distributed to school students i was also uh, one of the recipients of that because i went to a government school in the country um, i've noticed uh, there was a this the cooperative side card that was given if you yeah. attend school every day you get the cooperative society card where you can go to the cooperative society and uh, take uh, buy some rations uh, home uh, why can't the government introduce uh, matters of this sort we've seen even during the 70s big biscuit companies have been manufactured on the premise right. that they were providing biscuits to school students in the country so why can't the government step in and introduce something that is uh, that is going to help uh, the students in the country yeah well uh, as professor said uh, professor atula said there was a mismanagement by the government of the uh, the the two three years ago how the uh, uh, this uh, policy of the uh, the organic policy uh, well known as organic <laughs> policy but it is called green economic principles when it came up i was in a kind of a in, uh, uh, the understanding because i had the uh, i am having another hat yeah, it is called lanka organic agriculture movement i am the president of it and i thought this is going to be end of the organic agriculture because if if the overnight if the decision is taken due to the economic uh, uh, the constraint what we had the 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 president thought it is a solution go to org organic to avoid the spending of the fertilizer the chemical fertilizer yes. that was some of the advisors has advised him to go into the organic policy and it is not it is not helping to the country because no one is taking this kind of a crisis situation such a decision the as professor renuka said there are uh, uh, problems with uh, in the ground level of course there is a uh, international agencies having uh, also the responsibility because what i have seen in the last few 
uh, month, the country was get, uh, the giving uh, the diff uh, FAO and WFP and USAID was giving some kind of a help to the country with the name of uh, the food uh, supply. But what has given? And we should look at it in a, in a different way. The, they gave it to the each family 50 kilos rice, 20 kilos of lentils, and 10 liter of oil. This is not the nutritious food. The, it is good something getting to the people, but as a responsibility of the international organization who are talking about malnutrition and we civil society as us this is not the way to uh, supply as a responsible institution who are also talking about uh, the malnutrition and all other things and the government also having a responsibility to ask from them the what kind of a food you all are trying to distribute because what I heard from the, uh, the UN agencies and also the, the government uh, uh, food security programs, and they were requested what is mostly use and mostly needed. Mm -hmm. But it is not the, the, the nutrition uh, division has uh, advised and also the requested. Mm. And the, there is a policy in the WFP. Uh, P World Food Program. If they distributing food, they should purchase from the country, not from importing food. If there is a scarcity, it can be bring from outside. But what was happened? They have brought some food from outside and distributed here, and 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 luckily it is helping uh, one way because we can keep the stocks as it is uh, with the with the but even the quality of the food that are being that imposed is, to the country that is isn't that a big question mark as well uh, it, is, it is it is because the food was distributed the uh, especially in the lentils it went with the yellow uh, lentils uh, the, the the I have visited Mulatiu and uh, even uh, uh, the Vaunia, the people used to say, oh, we can eat vade, it's very cheap. I was asking why it is. Because the government, uh, the, these agencies are distributing uh, the lentils in the, uh, the 10 kilos, and it is more than enough uh, for a few months. People used to sell it out. And the vade producers, are uh, giving <laughs> very cheap price and that was something uh, the because when I asked from the people why you all are selling it it can't be cheap because the low quality and that has happened and 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 what has given to the people it's a low quality where there but are what I don't understand is uh, what I don't understand is uh, Tilak <coughs> when you talk about uh, dal and the, and the lentils that you're talking about um, we think that lentils are coming mostly to Sri Lanka from countries like India it is not no no uh, we are getting no, it from no, Australia I'm not saying that it uh, is coming from Canada Canada where Australia, you, Australia. so the, those countries yeah so but don't you think these countries uh, give out the best or is it is it is it of bad quality that they send to developing nations like Sri Lanka? That is where the, we were talking about the food qualities. The, some of these things, are, the importers are not importing as a human food. That's right. It is coming as a animal feed. Animal feed. Yep. These are the uh, the bigger questions. Now there are some uh, projects going on with the uh, the FAO and the. Uh, uh, other uh, right. UN agencies to keep up uh, the food quality of the country because uh, the some of the the even though we having a very good uh, uh, food control division 
uh, in the uh, under this uh, the health ministry uh, there are the different regulations uh, to uh, keep uh, uh, this uh, the food quality and all other things the we also having dietary guidelines right and all this helping uh, to the uh, the uh, the going for a the uh, the good level of uh, the nutrition and all that but when it practice and the the consumers affairs authority and all other the related institution food control uh, uh, sections they are in a crisis situation right. so we'll, we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to the discussion momentarily uh, uh, because we need to go for a short commercial break when we come back uh, we'll be discussing is Sri Lanka facing an impending food crisis all this and more after a short commercial break stay connected stay with face nation we will be right back life is a collection of moments when you're burnt out and you've reached your limit when you're hurt and everything brings you down. When you're happy and nothing can bring you down. Life is a collection of moments. Jones Gold Blend Tea. For life's every moment. We've seen uh, how the government has uh, taken certain measures to um, sort of alleviate the economic hardship. Education should work hand in hand with child protection officers, with probation officers. The civic space for um, expression, assembly, dissent is in fact shrinking. That the Aragale also fail to focus on the real issues. Uh, there is a large amount of pressure that's exerted uh, by the geopolitical realities around uh, Sri Lanka. Devolution has meant the transfer of certain powers from people at the centre, politicians, to politicians at the periphery. The People's Platform, every Tuesday and Friday at 9.30pm on TV1. Peepus. <laughs> Life is a collection of moments when you're burnt out and you've reached your limit. When you're hurt and everything brings you down. When you're happy and nothing can bring you down. Life is a collection of moments. Jones Gold Blend Tea. For life's every moment. Welcome back. This is Face the Nation. Uh, before we went for a break, uh, Niresh was about to pose a question to the panelists. Niresh, the ball is in your court. Thank you, Shamir. So, uh, Professor Atula, yes. uh, I just want to uh, point out that uh, you know, we were discussing uh, if there's such a problem between institutions in the government and getting institutions to work together. Uh, but that seems really strange because here we, we, we bring together around this round table, we bring people, professionals from many uh, different uh, uh, organizations, both private and government, and they sp speak very clearly and uh, they cooperate very well with each other. You four gentlemen are a case in point. 
but uh, when you uh, when we think that the CEB and the, the Mahaveli ministry don't talk to each other, don't yes. cooperate, what's really going on? That is why that is why I said initially, yeah. if you have a plan, a national plan, that national plan will indicate where these institutes come in. I'll tell you an example. We want to improve the uh, quality of our food, the quality of the food that we that we produce. Now, how do we ensure that? We have a very well established uh, Sri Lanka Standards Institute, SLSI. We have a very well established Sri Lanka Accreditation Board. These are the people who show the standards. These are the standards that must be followed if you are producing this food, this food, this food and this food. Accreditation board, we say, this lab, these testing laboratories are accredited. We can, we can, uh, we can, they, they are, their information is valid. These are the uh, laboratories that are accredited. These are the, uh, the factories that are accredited. Then we get this quality thing coming up. The, these are the institutes that should be roped in into our plans. Then in the plan there is an activity. Uh, the, the activity is to accredit the lab. Then who is going to do it? The action plan by whom? Uh, Sri Lanka Accreditation Board. Standards of this food, uh, the meat products for example, standards uh, or the organic product standards. Sri Lanka SLSI comes into it. This should be in the plan. If you just say standards, it's there, accreditation board, there's nothing like you said. They are just there. They are each one there. Personally, if I know somebody, I can go and get it done. But if there's a national plan, we can get these things in the plan. In the plan itself, these things it should be there. Then they come into the picture. Then the accountability is there in the last column. Who is responsible for getting the Sri Lanka accreditation board to accredit the laboratories? Who? The additional Secretary, Minister of Health, Additional Secretary, Minister of Agriculture, they are the ones. Accountability is there in the plan. Then they come in. Sir. Otherwise, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's just there. So that is how these things uh, can come in. Med Department must work together with the Minister of Agriculture and give them, well ahead of time, the weather changes. We are talking about uh, uh, climate change. If we can't predict the weather in five, uh, five days, how can we uh, talk about climate change? How can we? Who is going to say, yes, there is climate change in this Sri Lanka, climate change is everything. When we can't, you are saying we can't predict for five days. So then we have to upgrade this. We don't need to, this SLSI is well established. The Sri Lanka Exclusion Board is well established. Okay, then uh, if the med department cannot give this prediction, I'm sure they can, surely upgrade it, upgrade it, give, give whatever they want and it's, it has become a problem. It, it is not coming into this picture. Uh, they must come into this picture. They must be able to, actually if you take your phone and say, they, they do that. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they say sunshine, rain, uh, humidity is there. Med department. So why are they saying they can't? Tropical countries, there are many. They do fine. Small island economies, we are one of them. New Zealand, we, Seychelles, small island economies, they have similar problems. They do it fantastically well. So it's just to, like you said, somebody, why should somebody from the top do that? Why should we, why do we need the president to take these decisions? When there are ministers, when there are secretaries, they must take these decisions. No, Why the is problem it? is, Professor Atula, it's all well and good to say this now today. Uh, yesterday, we saw the minister, state minister of ports authority <laughs> accusing the cabinet minister of ports authority of corruption and not letting his job to be done. Yeah. We saw several years ago when the fertilizer, uh, organic fertilizer campaign was started, how the GMOA president had a hand in that, yes. <laughs> right? Uh, he spoke about kidney ailments at that time, right? W what? This is a country full of jokers, right? We have people who try to dictate terms to us, 
and then try to take us on a ride. And we get onto the bandwagon and go behind the politicians. Shouldn't this culture change at the end of the day? Definitely, we, we, this, is a, this is the thing we are facing, the, 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 the wall, brick wall that we are facing, how to break it. So, we, 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 what do we do? do? We, we don't need, I remember at that time, sir, there were lots of committees appointed. 12 member, 15 member committee. For the first meeting, 12 members come, next meeting, 8 come, the 4 don't come. They don't come. The next meeting, those 4 come, the next 6, they don't come. This, well, you need 3 or 4 experts. 3 or 4 experts. Get the framework done. We have enough experts in this country. Enough experts. They are silently waiting. We are not making use of them. But are they silently waiting? Yes. Because they are being crowded out by the politicians. Yes. So the do we need politicians to head these committees at all? Because I'm sorry, very few of our politicians would ever bother to read a report. Yes. And most would never understand yes. what's in a report. Uh, so why do they yeah. need to be in the room at all when we have learned professors, doctors sure. and so on, other profession professionals, uh, ministry secretaries, who can be on those uh, committees and one of them can share? Definitely. Definitely. We, uh, that, is, that is the thing. The thing is, we need those we need the ministries because they are the ones who will uh, 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 approve the funding. They are the ones who will approve this, that, this. Otherwise, it will no move forward. Uh, uh, for there are there's a fantastic committee they recommend this, is so it won't move forward if the secretary and the additional secretary who it is not there. That's why in a, even in a meeting like this, if the additional secretary or secretary is seated there, he knows, and we can ask him what, what do you say. So, th that is the future we are looking at. This is the future, the new future that we want to uh, create for the children of our, of our country. Mm. We, we have to create that. We are, we are facing it. How so, to do it? So, Dr. Saranayaka, now, I recollect a couple of years ago, during Gotabe Rajpaksa's time, um, there was a special commission in general that was appointed to look into uh, rice stocks that were surreptitiously uh, stocked up by rice mill owners in the country. Uh, are you all suspecting that rice mill owners, private rice mill owners in the country are still doing that? Uh, well, uh, in fact, uh, they must be having some quantities, mm. but we can't predict or we can't be sure of that because uh, there is no way to collect uh, data on that. Uh, they must be having some quantities. And uh, on the other hand, uh, that quantity uh, acts as a buffer stock also in some cases. Uh, we are, I'm not no, but, but is this, you always say, Dr. Saranayaka, that this data is difficult to uh, get, but um, is, I, I feel it's quite simple because you have the number of hectares um, and from <laughs> if you if you multiply the number of uh, paddy that comes out of from these hectares as rice and then you check which mills uh, took these uh, rice and how much of stocks did they put out you get the <laughs> number of <laughs> stocks available now you can yeah. as a, as a casing point this is what the sri lanka tea board does the sri lanka at the colombo tea auction you have uh, a number and that number is divided upon exporters who buy at the Kalamba tea auction and then the customs department data shows how much of tea has been exported and that's how you collate the data. Yeah, in a, it seems yeah, very simple no, but you, a, you no, make it sound very no. in, complex. Yeah, in case of rice it is not that much simple. Say for an example, you know the productivity of our paddy land. They are varying and they are changing from 1.5 to even 10, 10 to 11 metric tons per hectare. They are varying. And we don't know even the same area, say for an example, in the same district, like uh, Mulatiu. The one area you are getting around 9 metric tons per hectare, mm. but in the adjacent field you are not getting that much. So it is a bit difficult, not like that. It's difficult to collect that da data in that way. The other thing, and the Department of Agriculture is not 
uh, if I say correctly. But don't you think yeah. this has to be regulated? <laughs> yeah, it, it should be regularized. Where you, uh, you have to regulate it. If not, we will always face this problem. Yes. But also, Shami, there are agriculture extension officers yeah. in every yeah. village. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what are they doing I, while, while the I, rice I, is being I, harvested? May I, may I elaborate yeah. on that? In fact, the agriculture is not, not totally the duty of uh, the Department of Agriculture. You know that many of the paddy production area, more than 65% of the land area, is coming under provincial councils and they are they have the autonomy uh, and uh, Mahavali Development Authority they also involved in agriculture irrigation department they also in agriculture agrarian service department I mentioned it I think they also involved in there are many institutes but basically Department of Agriculture Mahavali Authority of Sri Lanka and the provincial councils of agriculture I mean provincial depa departments of agriculture they involved in agriculture so, say for an example this uh, extension of the those areas which are coming under the purview of the provincial director of agriculture we are not touching that area it is coming under the purview of the provincial no, department is, of agriculture but, yes. but honestly <laughs> doctors they like it. this is not a complex problem to have the yes. data yes you just have to get a good uh, can, data scientist can, from the Moruto University and uh, regulate these numbers yeah. properly and uh, get it out can, and can, then we will have uh, how much of uh, how much the big yeah. rice mill owners in yeah. the country can are holding or keeping uh, can stops? I, can I add a little? So one thing, the Department of Agrarian Service, to the best of my knowledge, now they are developing uh, this uh, drone, not drone, the satellite-based uh, technology development. They are, it is uh, taking place in the department. They are going to measure the exact uh, paddy lands and uh, they are going to predict the uh, paddy production also. Then uh, in the near future, it will be uh, better. <laughs> I just I just hope so, Dr. Jayanta, because <laughs> these are not complex matters, you know. If you look at countries like um, even India, they, they have a proper regulatory framework to regulate this. Then today when you are here, uh, uh, Dr. Sanaga, you would know exactly how much XYZ have in their stocks and how much does the paddy cultivation board has, development board has, and then you can come and tell me. No, Shami, don't worry. There is no food crisis in the country for the next 12 months. Every month, we have approximately 250,000 metric tons of rice. Anyway, I'm just <laughs> leaving that aside for the moment. So, Tilak, uh, what is the role of the Food First Information Action Network Sri Lanka? Uh, what sort of assistance do you all roll out for the people in terms of food security? The especially, what we do it in our capacity, we the, this crisis also uh, having a responsibility of each and everyone because of that we are educating the especially it is vulnerable people uh, the right now uh, the when it come to the the urban situation the especially pregnant mothers are mostly vulnerable and children and therefore we are educating them how they can produce something themselves that is one of the our the the we, we are providing seeds we are providing some uh, planting material to grow themselves at least to uh, face the crisis so when you when you say tiraka uh, uh, i've i've always found this um, found this uh, very difficult to do because let's say someone who lives in an apartment yeah you are talking about the rural sector, uh, it's okay, rural yeah. villages, people will have a little bit of land, they can grow, there is no problem and you know, it's not an issue. Yeah. This is why uh, Basil Rajapaksa's program uh, to uh, distribute seeds among uh, the um, urban population became uh, a useless exercise. Why? Because uh, you can't grow, uh, you can't grow uh, vegetables in your backyard when you have a, a concrete garage. But you, if you go uh, into the urban settlements now, the even surrounding Ratmalana, we have some fields. The they have uh, only the house space. Under that, they are growing at least 25 grow bags. We have distributed in their backyard. Uh, the hanging uh, the bottles and something they do that is where the you need to show them 
the how can how technology could technology be could uh, you take use. place and there is a the very good resource center next to the katubad you may know the um, the place of the uh, dilma uh, training center and it's having uh, a demonstration farm and we bring the some of uh, those mothers to there and show them how to do it and demonstrating it uh, in that center uh, the how can they grow at least their own green leaves mm -hmm. and that is how they can uh, in a, in a in a way they can come into out of this uh, crisis and and we also uh, in the other uh, uh, side we are also promoting the because the today we are talking about uh, uh, the 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 especially the popular uh, the single is uh, uh, the word is gedare anagamang sanskuti and we used to go into the supermarkets and buy the things and go but the small the uh, the uh, the people can't afford some of these supermarket prices and all that. therefore the we also promoting street vending the people who comes the and selling the mm. kira and some other things to the, their doorstep and therefore we have uh, chosen uh, to help uh, uh, these uh, street vendors to improve their quality health conditions to bring these uh, the the cheaper and good food to the uh, people's doorstep yeah but but what is the reason Tilak now today 100 grams of ginger um, is being sold at uh, 320 rupees yeah 100 grams of ginger that is because you take 200 grams it's 640 yeah right that is uh, the if you uh, look at the uh, food chain how many people get involved into this right this uh, production from Palmer uh, the field it goes to Dambulla and then it comes to the your the neighboring boutique if if you analyze how many people have yeah. been uh, involved in the, with the food chain the, we, that is why in 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 popular terms we are talking about food miles how it is coming into the your doorstep and it having so many no but i remember no, the problem is the the problem is i, I think dr uh, professor rainu calls can chip in to answer this yeah uh, during our time when we were small i'm always reflecting on the past because i believe the food at that time was very nutritious and you know we got um, three meals and a meal from school as well um, our parents used to try and give us uh, mung beans or lentils uh, uh, or cowpea or you know green gram and all that um, in the morning but today if you go to the shop or supermarket it's beyond affordability uh, uh, the green grams was going at approximately 1100 rupees a kilogram at one point I can't afford it. how yeah. can people afford it the even it is not growing in the country yes the, because if you if you look at but in a situation like that, mustn't you import? Yeah, uh, it is import uh, import nutritional food like that and give it at a cheaper price to the uh, to the uh, students and even children. That is where the as professor said, the we need a kind of a, the 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 correct data and the proper actions because you don't know how much you are producing in the country how many kilos you need to the consumption and the what is the production what should be important and that is missing in in a way because the some uh, the experience what i having the when it come to the some of the local productions like big onion when our harvest is coming the the definitely the the some of the our the policy makers are trying to import it when the farmers having buffer stocks and then farmers will not grow in the next season because they were lost 
and that is the experience. Well, Professor Renu, could you want to chip in? Uh, yeah, regarding the, the prices, uh, uh, now as uh, uh, he mentioned that uh, there's a long chain from the farm gate to the consumer. So when you are addressing, especially uh, the, the, the rice has a separate uh, issue, you can call it as a mafia. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to talk because the rice expert is here, the production expert. Now uh, I'm talking on behalf of the consumer, uh, that's uh, the people's uh, nutrition. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the consumer wants something nutritious at an affordable price, but the, uh, the, uh, the food doesn't reach the, the consumer at the affordable price because there are so many middlemen in our uh, the, uh, the yes. chain and uh, then the price regulatory things, the government interventions uh, must uh, uh, play a role uh, to control and because there are responsibilities to regulate the entire food market and provide food. Uh, at an affordable price to the consumers, then the consumers can get nutritious food. Rice is not the only food mm. uh, nutritious. Rice is just a staple. But uh, as nutritionists, we tell people, eat eggs. Eggs are now expensive, but now the prices have gone down a little bit. Chicken or the meat, expensive. Most of the nutritious uh, uh, the foods are nowadays expensive. Fruits, vegetables, very, very expensive compared to uh, some other foods. Yeah. Yeah, even uh, the middle class people like us uh, are unable to afford uh, the things. So price regulatory things, it's not the government uh, cannot do everything. They can and also, uh, I do not 100% agree that the government should import all the nutritious food and give them uh, at the affordable price. So who is going to pay that? Again, the people. But as you correctly said, we should not forget about the uh, the most vulnerable groups and the the uh, the our social safety net must be strong and that is also World Bank and everyone yeah, uh, who are assisting. They, they accept they accept that because such people must be carefully c selected and then targeted interventions targeted support should be given not just blanket coverage mm. even that uh, the three portion program is like a blanket coverage everyone wants something given free of charge that is not shouldn't be the policy anymore but most vulnerable really needed people uh, have to be given not not all school children may need uh, the free school meal but very vulnerable poor uh, uh, the families poor areas uh, they need a nutritious meal but that other people uh, the tax money should be properly used otherwise as uh, uh, earlier the question was asked uh, uh, whether the country will get affected because of this malnutrition yes uh, uh, time to come uh, we will get disabled I mean not uh, physically disabled uh, the uh, educationally not well fit and fit to the society and their productivity is low and then you will uh, see that uh, the country's economy will go down and it's a well-known thing that if a population does not get the nutritious food in time to come that particular country's economy will get affected because people are not very capable in handling that I mean physically and as well as mentally. Professor Renuka, do you feel that the political leaders have paid enough attention to this nutrition problem of the country or, or is it that they haven't paid any attention at all? They paid attention but uh, this country uh, most of the decisions are, were taken by the political leaders most of the time, not all, but most of the time thinking about their vote base but not uh, considering the scientist uh, opinion and the, not the technical, not evidence and the research based decisions. Giving everything free they have a hidden agenda that we will get the votes, but that is not the way it should be done. And there are, that's why I said that there must be a coordination, especially in nutrition, agriculture uh, ministry, health ministry, especially work together. But uh, being a person uh, uh, engaging in this uh, field for 25 years, I don't see that kind of uh, 
smooth coordination. So, so, so we have a question from one of our viewers. Um, can't the CWE go near the farmers, purchase vegetables, onions, potatoes, etc., using their lorries and sell them at CWE outlets? These commodities could be sold at a very affordable price, reducing the middleman from business. Can, can that happen? Uh, Surely. Yes. Uh, very, very similar things can happen. Uh, not, not, not only the CWE, yes, definitely that is one way in which we can, we can avoid this lots of other um, uh, expenses coming in to, uh, to the cost of the product. Uh, uh, we can, uh, why not uh, have demonstration farms um, in every district? We have 25 districts. We have 25 agricultural research stations. In those districts, we can make use of them. Use, make use of them. Kilinochi, for example. We have an agriculture research station in Kilinochi. They can give all the inputs for the crops of that area. Onions, chilies. You, you give the fertilizer. You provide it. You buy the uh, products from the farmers. There's actually uh, down south. Mahidupanam is huge. Uh, facility there for the dry zone agriculture. They can do that. They can get into it and do this. So that is where uh, uh, the, 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 a new new plan should uh, come like this to cut that middle cost out. And okay, CW is a good question. Yeah, why not CW? Why not something new? Think something. Get out of this box and sit, think something. New. Don't go back to the same thing. Think new. We have demonstration units. Have uh, agriculture, the district uh, research stations, provide, giving, having farms and outputs there. That also have value addition. Then you can have value addition. Have bio centers and have. So we have forgotten the uh, the, 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 the the dairy farms, the goat farms, mm. the Sri Lanka Sri Lanka cattle. If we can increase their yield by Two points, three. There are there's large number there. Increase the nutrition. Start off with increasing their nutrition. Have a plan to give them good food. Then at least improve the increase it. Increase the yield by two three liters, not five six. They collect it into a bio center. Value addition. Cheese curd, whatever. Value addition centers. Then spread them around 25 centers. Now, uh, Professor Atula, th these are all very good ideas. Yes. But I must say that I'm not an agricultural person, I'm a journalist. But none of what you just said is new to me. Yeah. Um, which tells me something very alarming that if these things which I know about aren't happening, yes. our agriculture sector, our food security is in dire straits. Yes. Th these are very simple things yes. which even children yes. would agree to. Yes. True. Yes. Bring in, bring in technology. Bring in technologies. Get new varieties. We have 2,500 traditional rice varieties. 2,500. Each one of them has a fantastic character. Mostly medicinal. Niang V. What is Niang V? Drought resistant. There's the gene. Take that. Take that gene and put it into our traditional rice. There's the technology uh, there. Let's ask, let, let's yeah. ask that from um, Dr. Senanayaka. Yeah. Niang V was an example that was yeah. brought forward. C can, can that happen? Yeah. Uh, can we do it? So, yeah, it is not that much simple. Yeah, the practical uh, problems are there, but yet we have produced uh, some drought resistant varieties. As uh, Professor Atula correctly mentioned, that we, we are working on that aspect. So, very quickly, we can't cross that and make the Not output or the otherwise putting up the gene, as we mentioned, using biotechnical tools. We can do that. But these things are, you know, there's another, we will go to another step if we try to talk about that thing because at the moment we can't produce uh, biotechnology developed varieties from sir uh, doesn't agree with me <laughs> yeah because uh, we are talking about genetically modified yeah, uh, yeah. variety but uh, we are but we, we so, have a sir, through the normal safety act sir, yes, sir. Uh, coming in yeah, uh, this is this is sir the problem with the genetically modified organisms to improve our, we are talking about improving the nutritional quality 
The thing is that we are taking a, a gene from one, one uh, species and putting it to another. That's a problem. But here, we are saying, take the gene from the Niang V. Niang V gene, drought resistant gene, and put it into a rice plant. Rice to rice. Can that be done? Yeah, yeah of course. It can, it can be, be done, done. But, in yes. a, but it is uh, no, even not through biotechnological means. We are doing such type of things. That's why we have been able to develop a couple of varieties and they are in the process also. Dr. Yeah. Sarnak, now those days when I, when, when at my house, when we cook a pot of rice, you could keep it for nearly six, seven hours without a problem. But why is it that the rice that we are purchasing now from the market, uh, gets bad within, uh, yeah. uh, within four it, five it, uh, it depends on not only the variety, but varieties are okay. It depends on the way it is processed Process. until you get it to your mouth because uh, the millers and the processing technology is also there. But most of the varieties which you have, they can be kept for a long time because I personally I also cooked our varieties. Yeah. We eat our varieties and they can be cooked. But due, due to some processing uh, technologies and processing methods, it may be affected. So, yeah. so there is a notion in the public domain saying that the rice that we consume, like the samba varieties, mm -hmm. are polished. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Is it true? Yeah, most of the varieties which you buy from the market, they are polished, uh, I think, too much polishing. And if you want to have good health, uh, you have to have with uh, this rice bread. So if, you, if, if you have to maintain good health, what is the variety that you propose, uh, no, uh, Dr. Chandra? No, out of the all the improved varieties, almost all the varieties are okay. But if you try to eat with some brand, I mean, the without removing the without uh, too much polishing, if you eat it, it will be better. Otherwise, you have a couple of traditional varieties. Also, all these varieties have plus minus points. Uh, so I can't say that all the all the almost varieties which we have developed, they are giving good results, and you can eat them. But uh, I, we do not recommend uh, the consumption of rice after two months. But I'm sure, Dr. Janth, you must not be having all the varieties. Now, what do you have it? At, what do you have at home? Me, yeah, this is a uh, now generally the one people uh, eat uh, 8336 to the red red color variety. Uh, red color variety. We we eat that. Generally, we do not. Uh, I do. <laughs> I should not say say. Okay, I say. I say. <laughs> yeah, they're better to eat uh, Nadu type varieties rather than eating Samba mm -hmm. type varieties yeah. for your health. And that's you some are, good practical advice. Practical yes. advice. <laughs> Nadu variety. Better to eat. <laughs> so I want to. I, I want to ask the four of you. What is the way forward? Now we spoke about the problems. Uh, what sort of uh, actions uh, need to be taken to arrest these problems, but what is the way forward? If you were to advise the government, I know uh, Dr. Jayantha will now be in a dilemma, being, being in the government <laughs> to advise the government, <laughs> but I would, like to, I would like to ask and pick uh, the brains of the four of you. So, uh, so let's start off with yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Professor Arthur Lofas. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, we need a, a new future. Uh, we don't want to go back to uh, where we were and get into problems again. A new future. Uh, it is open, uh, vastly open. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, rich biodiversity, uh, biodiversity hotspots. We have millions and millions of genes. You open the window, millions. Not a single gene have we identified, cloned and patented. When we say we, it includes me too. Not a single gene. So much we can do. So we need a plan, a national plan with strategies and activities. And the action plans will get the respective institutes uh, roped in to this national, national plan. And in that national plan, time scale, time targeted plans, accountability should also be there. And then uh, we can see how it works uh, slowly, steadily, in a new format, bringing you new technology, value additions. Plantation sector, we have forgotten. Maybe it doesn't come into uh, the food chain. Why not? Coconut, rubber, value addition, enormous potential, sir. New, new value added product. We do have value added products from coconut and rubber. but. The, 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 the new markets are vast quality. We, to get those markets, we need high quality. That is where the Sri Lanka Standards Institute, uh, Accreditation Board, they all come in. 
and come into this value addition product. Think of ourselves and think of exports. Think of technology, not only for this, we have two mountains of medicinal plants, we can produce pharmaceuticals. We have wild uh, flower flowers in the floriculture areas, we can export. So there's export potential, look at the good uh, plan, national plan is the need there. Right, so uh, Professor uh, Renika, what are your thoughts? Okay. Now in this, uh, the table, that side, uh, the, uh, the experts involving in the production are there. So I'm, as I mentioned, I'm talking uh, uh, from the side of uh, uh, the demand or the, uh, the consumer. Now the consumers uh, get affected because of this, uh, the, the chain starting from the ga uh, farm gate and uh, how the food comes to me. So in the middle, uh, the, the civil society representative is here. Now, uh, the don't think that uh, the food, if the food available at cheaper price, always the consumers will consume it. The consumer awareness is important, so then from our side, what is expected uh, by the Ministry of Health and the, the universities, uh, make people aware of the, the correct food, nutritious food. So you ask a question about the, the, uh, the, the best uh, rice variety, uh, in terms of nutrition and health, so uh, Dr. Jayant said that uh, it's a kind of a Nadu variety, yes. So as a nutritionist, I said yes. And also, if the, uh, the, the question or the, the solution is not so simple. At the end of the day, how much you eat, the quantity matters, not only the, the type. Uh, say, for, for example, you can't eat large quantities of Nadu. But uh, you uh, naturally restrict the amount. So similarly, the consumer awareness is important, not only just the awareness. Yeah. So that's why I always believe that the things must start from the schools. And the, the children should have the good food habits from the school age. So you're still talking about this, your school age, probably. Uh, you got uh, some good uh, the messages from the school or school time that uh, what you have to eat. Don't think that everyone loves to eat mung bean. Yes. Um, people don't like. People like to eat uh, uh, paripu or that's uh, the, the dal. So okay, then the government, uh, if the government uh, uh, takes a, a decision to stop importing dal and uh, promote our mung bean, uh, it is a problem for the government. Yes. Mm. So everything is uh, uh, very complex, but the consumer must know the correct food that they should uh, eat. And at the same time, the supply side or the agriculture department, uh, they should supply what is required. So that's why I always said that there must be, you need to look at this not from just one angle, look at the entire food system the consumer and the supply and then only we can uh, solve this problem so don't forget about the consumer preference you are not feeding animals you are feeding people people have uh, their uh, preferences preference develop du during the life time so starting from the school starting from the preschool so everyone the parents have the responsibility don't just uh, uh, blame the the politicians parents have the responsibility to teach their uh, the children the right food habits and the government uh, has the the and also the the middlemen uh, who are in this uh, the chain of uh, the food chain should think about the country and should think about not just the profit think about the consumer but uh, uh, the realistically uh, the speaking the government plays a major role because they have to regulate the things but they are not there to supply everything free of charge just because there's a big garden in front in front of the parliament that doesn't mean that the parliamentarians eat that no yeah. it means parliamentarians <laughs> also humans that's right yeah. yes <laughs> yeah right yeah uh, it is uh, <coughs> To me, I think as Dr. Renuka earlier said, Professor Renuka also said, uh, there are 
a multi stakeholder approach where the 17 ministries and others were responsible to take this decision what should be it what should be the way of production and how it is uh, distributed and these decisions as professor said the the quality is coming from the people or, or consumers and they should be uh, aware what they are eating and that's a real challenge and it is a government responsibility it is also others responsibility where we uh, should uh, give a kind of a awareness and and that is our responsibility as civil society we think and to uh, get into the real picture everyone's responsibility uh, to look at broader level this uh, the food and food crises and the production and uh, the when it come to the the world level there are a lot of uh, countries now the as uh, professor said uh, the we are uh, we are not forgetting our plantation sector the what has been exported now the consumer preferences in the western world is changing they are asking the super not the super food they are asking the kind of good food and without that much contaminated yes. and the good food to be uh, served by uh, the, the we have a kind of a niche market in the world the with the the different product uh, the the specially the 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 spices we are se selling out the the specialty tea and all other things uh, the we can we can produce a different way which we can get higher market and it is the world is going on in a, that direction where we should look at because the still we are thinking the 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 the, the traditional production the technology can be incorporated and also the the the, the whole world uh, the talking about agroecology now and it is been uh, subjected uh, in the uh, the agriculture world now uh, the even the uh, FAO is promoting it in a way uh, the other uh, problem uh, the the world also talking about blue economy the with the the fish what we eat and how the plastic has been plundered into the sea and all these things has to be looked at in a broader way what we are eating and, and with that uh, I want to uh, say uh, the, the especially the, the food what we are eating is it uh, free from the contaminations and also the, it has to be a right of everyone. Thank you very much um, Tilak. I now move my attention towards uh, Dr. Janta, but before that, Dr. Janta, uh, we have a question from one of our viewers. Um, what nutritional value Nadu has since it is white? Uh, you mean uh, this? Uh, no, it, does, it doesn't say that uh, because of what I'm telling you that, uh, say for an example. But because pe people have yeah. a preconceived notion saying yeah. white rice is bad, yeah. red rice is good. No, that it, is, it, is no okay, I got it the, in the wrong way. No, yeah. it is not like that. Even the white one is also having the rice bran, the red one is having the rice bran, but once the rice bran is removed from re the red rice, we can recognize it. But white one, we, it is dif somewhat difficult for people to uh, recognize it. Mm. So there will be no very much big difference. Sometimes the anthocyanin and uh, what you call this, uh, this uh, health... Uh, uh, the, this some anti antioxidants uh, uh, anti are in uh, the, yeah, the red, red rice varieties, otherwise red and white. As a nutritionist, I'm telling, there is no major difference in the nutritional point of view. So it's uh, you, the people's belief and the preference. South, down south, uh, the south, they want to eat red rice and also the north. But the northerners eat 
uh, the, uh, the big okay. that's yeah yes. uh, so the Nadu, that's right? a different no, variety it's a big round type yeah, yeah. yeah. it's quite so long it, as yeah. well yeah. No, yeah. It's yeah. Round type. and it's, it's not there. kekulu uh, yeah. it's uh, again a parboil yeah, okay. right. okay. yeah. that's nadu kind of thing so the nadu is best uh, because uh, uh, in the process uh, uh, during the processing uh, when we uh, uh, the parboil that is boiling the rice uh, before we dry it uh, all the nutrients in the outer layer goes into the in inside and uh, preserve uh, during the uh, the milling when the uh, the outer cover is removed not the husk but uh, the milling process most of the nutrients are retained inside so when we eat we will get uh, more uh, vitamins and minerals and also we can't eat a lot i said that the quantity so matters I, 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 even when it comes to calories uh, 100 grams of red rice and 100 grams of white rice same. contain the same amount of it's calories same. more or less same more or less same okay yeah so uh, uh, dr jayanta what's, what's the way forward for sri lanka yeah uh, in so fact, i want to uh, ask yes. you dr jayanta yeah. if you were the minister <laughs> of agriculture <laughs> what would you do but tomorrow you have to go to work yeah. so i won't ask you that so i would ask you i would rephrase my question and ask you what is the message you have? Yeah, uh, first thing, as you correctly mentioned a couple of minutes ago, so we have the data gathering, data collection and data interpretation purpose, and we have to strengthen that one. You know, technically, and as uh, Dr. Henuka mentioned and as Mr. Tilak mentioned, sometimes we face the situation where you can lead the host to water, you can't make him drink. Because despite the fact that we are developing variety, we are developing te technology, sometimes the farmers may accept, as he very correctly mentioned regarding the mung bean example, these things are happening. But we need uh, more you know, close collaboration among uh, stakeholders, I mean basically institutes, uh, uh, which uh, involves in the rice pro the, uh, food crop production systems. It may be uh, the Department of Agriculture, Provincial Department of Agriculture, and universities and extension arms and with the general public, we need the close collaboration and uh, it should be supported by the policies also. Yeah. This is what and also supported by yeah. media. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we of course, uh, of course, uh, Professor Renuka, whatever the government tries to do, we of course will, we will continue to do our role. Sure. There is no question about that because we will stand with the people no matter what. Uh, I recollect um, in 2015 when when the Hapalne government came into power, we said the same thing, and we were the first um, first responders to the central bank bond controversy as well. So, whatever it is, we will always stand with the people, and we will always deliver what they uh, want as well. So, thank you very much, Professor Renuka Silva, Department of Applied Nutrition, Bambi University, for joining us this evening on Face the Nation. Uh, Tilak Kari was some executive director of the Food First Information and Action Network. Dr. Jayanta Saranayak, director of Rice Research and Development, Department of Agriculture, as well as Emeritus Professor Atula Pereira uh, from the University of Peradeni for joining us this evening on the show, as well as Nirosh Aliyatambi, consultant, English News Director at News First for joining us uh, this evening on Face the Nation. I leave you tonight with a quote as I always do. Hunger is not an issue of charity. It is an issue of justice. Take care and good night.